In this video, we're gonna talk about my realized gains for 2021. First five months in, knocking down some serious on the money, cash in hand profits. These aren't pie in the sky, these aren't stock appreciation. We put cash flow on the table. That's what we talk about here. I'm gonna show you my first five months, knocking it down. Now, hey, look, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a trade for which I get questions all the time. I'm going to show you how I deal with it. Stick around. I know you're going to like this one. Hey, welcome back, everyone. It is time for another Red Hot Covered Call video. Well, hey, look, I'm back behind the mic, excited about this video. Over the past two videos, I've really been dragging us down, right? I've been showing you trades that I've been kicked in the ribs. Absolutely not feeling good with some of the stocks I'm involved with right now. In fact, my last video, I showed you my unrealized losses right now, and that was about $70,000 at the time I did that video. Now, since I did that video, the the markets and my stocks have actually done exactly what I said they would do. You know, sometimes you just can't trade for trading sake, right? We got to sit back. We have to sort of absorb the kick in the ribs. We let the stocks base. And if you're investing in great stocks like I am, then you're going to get that positive uh, move higher. And that's what's happening. Now, granted, I'd love them to move higher quicker, but I'll take anything I can get. Now, now in this video, I'm going to show you my realized gains for 2021. Yeah, that's right. I have a lot of red on my P&L spreadsheet, but I'll tell you what, I have booked a lot of money on the table. And I'm going to show you those numbers here. And we're going to talk a little bit about how I did it. Right, at the end of the day, you want to take something away from this video. You want to learn something. I want to up your game. So that's what we're going to do here. And I'm going to show you a trade for which I get questions about all the time. All the time, people ask me this question. So I want you to stick around. Now, we got a lot to talk about. So let's go ahead and get to this. Uh, if you've never been to my channel and you like what you're hearing today, I want you to subscribe to the channel. It's right there and it's free. I'm a real, legit Actually, I might be the most legit covered call cash secure put trader on YouTube. I've been showing you my trades for the past five years, knocking it down. This is an experiment in retirement. See, I started this channel five years ago. I'm not in retirement. The idea is simple. Can I use my stocks or my cash to generate cash flow? Because look, in retirement, we need cash flow. We don't need stock appreciation, pie in the sky, stock moves that may or may not happen. We need cash flow. So this channel is about positive cash flow, generating it weekly, monthly, hell, annually. That's what I try to do. I have a goal of $60,000 this year. So as you can see, uh, I've already achieved that goal. Now, hey, look, I want you to subscribe to the channel because I have many more videos coming about monthly cash flow. You're absolutely, you're absolutely going to love it. Now, look, if you like this video today, bang that like button. It lets me know you like what I'm doing. Now we're going to jump right into this right now. Realize gains, realize gains of $78,000 have been placed on my table. Now let me explain that. A lot of people buy and hold, right? And they might have $78,000 of unrealized gains. And I get that. I have a lot of that in my buy and hold portfolio, but in my selling premium portfolio, I have literally stacked on the table $78,604 in the year of 2020. You know, a lot of people don't understand when you sell premium, you write cover calls, you sell cash secure put. That's what we do. We're able to generate upfront guaranteed cash. I call it my cash printing machine. I've been doing it for five years and having tremendous success. In fact, you could see in 2019, pre-pandemic knocked down some 49%. Didn't hit my goal that year. If you remember, I had a goal of 55,000. But I'll tell you what, that 22%, absolutely love making 22% cash on cash. Last year, the markets got absolutely crushed and then rallied. All of my videos last year, I really highlighted the fact that it was about a mindset. If you did not have a mindset that this market was going to move higher, you were just not going to be in the stock market. You would just have that mindset of defeatism. You'd be afraid to put your money in the market. Every time it went higher, you would think it's going to fall. Well, had you been a part of my channel last year, I showed you where I knocked down a record $110,000, almost 
49% cash on cash. And I'll tell you what, the tax man noticed it, if you know what I'm talking about. Now this year, we come out of the gates rocking. First five months, right now it is May 30th. We're already at 78,000. I think February I had the $24,000 month breaking all records. Again, selling premium. We buy stocks, we use our cash, we write covered calls, we sell cash secure puts. I haven't done anything I haven't done for five years. So for me, it's about getting positive again. I told you in the beginning of this video, my past two videos have been kind of downers. And uh, to be honest with you, some of you may be losing confidence in old John L. Well, hey, look, this is a part of the game. I always, I always try to motivate and inspire you to hang in there, right? Stocks move up and down and we don't always buy our stocks or get involved in a trade at the perfect spot. You'd love to do that, right? I would too. And recently I have found myself watching my chart indicators, feeling, feeling I'm picking great entry points. And uh, quite frankly, the markets are not playing the game. We have inflation talk that hit the market, scared everybody out of the market. And I'll tell you what, the NASDAQ fell even further. It hit correction territory. So a lot of the stocks I got involved in are great companies, killing the numbers, but they fell some 20 and 30 extra points because Wall Street sells off all the fluffy, thinly traded great stocks. They really do. Companies with great business models like Penn, Pinterest, and DraftKings, man, they just suck the life out of them. But uh, here we are, they're actually rallying them again. And I'll tell you what, you really have to have the mindset half cup full to be able to stay in the stock market. So what we're gonna do is talk about some good stuff today, my realized gains. I always love talking about the money I put on the table, pay the bills, live the good life. So let's go ahead and get that. I'm gonna show you my spreadsheet right now. Now again, if this is the first time you've been to my channel, I want you to subscribe. I want you to bang that like button. I show you my real P&L. Everybody talks about P&L and how these uh, fake gurus and uh, all these three trading pattern gurus will not show you their true P&L. Well, for me, what I try to do is show you my trades. We talk about them, so maybe you learn something. This is something that intrigues a lot of people that watch the videos on my channel. And I don't mind showing you because I know there's a certain part of you out there that wants to see the numbers. You love the trades. You love how I talk about motivation and ideas, but you want to see the numbers. Over the past five years, I've made $352,000 cash on the table. This year, 79,678. Well, if you notice, I didn't update my website. I'm going to have to do that. But this is what I do. This to me is my experiment in retirement. Can I actually generate real money in retirement? Now, as you can see, we're talking $6,600 cash on cash monthly. That's what it would break down to right now. If I stop trading the rest of the year, I will have made $6,600 monthly. That's what I'm talking about. And of course, cash on cash, I use about $225,000. Now, arguably this year, I got involved in a couple extra stocks, so I'm actually using a little bit more. But over the past five years, I have been consistent using about $225,000. Most of you might have a, a retirement portfolio or an IRA for which you have about $225,000. So this is a good number to work with, largely because a lot of you might have uh, that much in a portfolio. Well, what can you generate with it? Well, I'll tell you what you can generate with it. If you get good at this, you could generate some 35% cash on cash. Now I will say this, I am more active. I know a lot of you are passive out there, but I am more active. I buy back my options, take little crumbs off the table. But you know what? At the end of the day, the fundamentals of what I do is no different than anybody else. I have stocks, I write covered calls. I have cash, I use it for cash secure puts. Now look, that puts real money on the table, guaranteed money. So if you're watching this video and you don't quite understand what the covered call is or the cash secure put is, hey look, YouTube has thousands of how-to videos. I want you to watch this video. I want you to search YouTube covered call basics. A lot of times when I get here on the channel, I get so excited to talk about a trade. Uh, I assume a lot of you are already up to speed with what is a covered call and what is a cash secure put. But look, I don't want that to deter you from watching my videos because I try to bring you real life trades, trades that I've probably done in the last week. So they're timely and relevant. So once you learn the basics, you get right up to speed real quick. And by the way, if you hadn't noticed, I bring it to you straight talk style and I try to bring you the passion. 
because I know it's passion that keeps you in the game. Look, over the past month, I've been down $70,000 with unrealized losses. If I let that bother me, I'd be in the fetal position. I wouldn't look at the markets and I wouldn't be generating cash flow, right? So many people find themselves in that spot. And I did too, back in 2015. Now I've told that story many times. We have to keep a half cup full mentality. It is a mindset. Mindset keeps you working it, staying in the game. I'm going to tell you right now, that's one of the most important things. So let's go ahead and look at some of the finer details of these numbers. Now, before we get there, if you didn't know I had a membership, well, you do now. My Upgraded CTP Dashboard membership is not only gives you access to the Upgraded CTP Dashboard, where it has five dashboards to research the best stocks trading now. It has a dividend dashboard, a top 30 dashboard, the CPT dashboard, which has 100 of the best trading stocks. But here's the deal. That gets updated every week. And I'll tell you what, I find a lot of my trades on the dashboard. Love that dividend dashboard because it shows over the next 30 days what stocks are going to have at X dividend date. I'm able to sort that dividend and oh, by the way, the stocks are sorted based on all the information. So if those stocks happen to be in the top 30 or the CPT dashboard, you'll see it. You'll see if they're a part of the, the FFTY, which is the ETF for the IDB 50. That gets updated every week. That in itself is awesome because I update that every single week. But you also get all those emails that I send out to my members, seeing the world through my eyes, where I talk about stocks that I'm interested in. You know, you get a little peek over my shoulder. Uh, I'm going to show you all my trades. I'm going to show you all my trades so far for five years. All these, all these stocks that you're about to see for which I made over $79,000, uh, my members have seen them all because they get to see all my real-time trades. I give you commentary on why I open them, why I close them. Not only that, I give you charts of the week. I give you, I give you the new cash flow corner. Every single week, I now introduce to the members a cash flow corner stock, ETF, closed end fund, or mutual fund. Look, it's about cash flow. It's about positive cash flow. So every single week, I'm going to send my members that pick. And I'll tell you if I have skin in the game or not. Look, if any of that interests you, I have a wheel report that uh, I'm actually posting on the web. There's a wheel report dashboard. But I'll tell you, it gets mixed in with all the other dashboards. I'm going to actually pull the wheel report out and we're going to put that on the web. So the best stocks trading now, we input that data and then we sort it based on what makes a great wheel trade. Yeah, that's right. You hear everybody on YouTube talking wheel trade. Well, I have a report that shows the best stocks that's trading in that perfect range for a great wheel trade. Here, look, go to ctpdashboard.com, click upgraded dashboard. And if any of that interests you, would love to welcome you aboard. Look, there's actually a one free month offer right underneath that tab. Go check it out and uh, would love to welcome you aboard. Now, before we get back to the spreadsheet, here is where I'm at. May 2021, I've already done 97 trades, and I think I have a couple on the books right now. So by the time we get to June 1st, you never know. We may have over 100 trades in the first six months of 2021. Now, last year, much more active, 217 trades. And uh, if you notice the 2019, well, I started the upgraded dashboard in December of 2019. So I did eight trades in that that month. And real quick, this is just how I open a trade. Uh, I will send out to all the members what I'm thinking. What's the mindset, right? It's always about mindset here. And even though I did a couple day, in fact, this was three days, three day trade on DraftKings, picking up a tiny crumb of 350 bucks. Hey, look, I'm always in the game, always have my head in the game. So, so for me, this was the setup for DraftKings. I'm really looking to pick up a little crumb as I try to battle back. DraftKings hits this bottom here and then it starts to rally as the NASDAQ rallies and now it's sort of basing and maybe it'll base just like that. I can do little crumb trades and we can crumb our way back to profitability and that's exactly what I aim to do. So let's go to that spreadsheet and check it out. I'll show you everything I've done so far. Okay, so here we are. I know, I know a lot of you are saying, look man, why does it take you this long to get here? Well, look, I love talking to you. That's what I love to do. I love to talk to you. So let's look at my numbers. Now, I'm going to do something here that might blow your mind. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and back this out just so you get a feel for how many trades I have done this year. 
Now, as I peel this back more and more, you can see that uh, everything in this green column, see this green column right here? That is all of the wins for this year. So far, that's the wins. Absolutely, I've done 97 trades. The non-green cells are my losses. So right now, looking at it really quick, I see four losses. Didn't take many hits this year yet. I do understand that I'm underwater on some of my trades right now, but like I've always told you, those trades are not over until we sell the shares. And they're far from being over right now. So let's go ahead and look at this. Let's, let's sort this column by the money. Everybody wants to see the money, let's sort it by the money. Z to A, which uh, should bring up the big guns near the top. Now, as you know, I have been doing a lot of weekly $1,000 challenges. So for me, my numbers are going to be a bit juiced because of those $1,000 weekly challenges. Hey, look, if you're doing $1,000 a week, every single week, well, look, we're knocking down some serious money. So as you can see right here, man, I'm doing covered calls on pins, DraftKings, Rocket Mortgage, and I'll tell you what, even more, look at all these big, juicy premiums. Now again, those are book trades. Those are book trades. Those trades are over. I'm telling you, that's how we get to 79,000 in only five months. Now with that said, we do have some trades here that went negative on me. I want to talk about this one here, this $4,600 negative trade. Now, if you remember, that was Zillow. I did a cash secure put on Zillow. I did not want to own the shares. Do you remember when the stock was trading near 200? I did a 192.50 cash secure put and the stock fell. Stock fell to 140, kicked in the ribs. I ended up buying that option back. As you could see, I ended up buying that option back for some 40 six dollars had to eat that one uh not a problem we ended up buying some shares we ended up keeping one of the cash secure puts live i do have zillow shares at about 148 stock seems to be getting a little bit of traction here we might be able to make that a green trade uh, also had a $2,100 loss, but that's actually not a loss. That's an Advi trade where Advi had rocketed past my strike price. I ended up buying the option back to alleviate the obligation, but I immediately sold the shares at the current stock price. And I believe it was trading at 116. So I had time left on the trade. Instead of letting it go to fruition or expiration, I went ahead and bought it back and I immediately sold the shares. By doing that, you pay to uh, close the cover call which means you're going to add to your cost basis like i did but then i'm going to sell the shares immediately at the 116 price now i don't make anything more than the 106 plus the premium but that was a way for me to get out of that trade even though the trade still had about three weeks left it's what i do all the time if a stock goes above our strike price well chances are that option is trading for real money there won't be much time value left and remember time value is our real cost of the trade so when that option was trading damn near real money i went in and bought it back i sold the shares immediately making money and being able to move on in the trade so uh, what you're seeing there is actually the cost of the buyback but uh, what you don't see there is the profit in the shares being sold hey look my p l spreadsheet flushes it all out i put in my trade i close my trade i ultimately sell the stock it is what it is and that's what you're seeing right here i have used over this first five months Stocks like Pins, DraftKings, 3M, Workhorse, which is a dog. We're going to talk about Workhorse in the coming videos. Absolutely have an idea with Workhorse. But we also use Zillow, Rocket. We're using Redfin. We're using Pen. We're using Visa. We're using Bristol Myers. We're using Intel. Look, I have a basket of stocks. I tell you all the time. Once you learn this game and get your basket of stocks, well, chances are you won't need me anymore. But you might always be looking for that next great covered call. And a lot of the stocks that you actually see right there, I found on my dashboards. So I'll tell you what, it is an invaluable resource for me. Oh, there's a Dominion trade. Dominion is a utility stock that I bought. What I love to do with Dominion is try to pick up an extra dividend. I mentioned that earlier in the video. What I love to do is take a buy and hold stock. I collect their dividend. That's why I own the stock to collect its dividend. Well, during the non-event months, right? No earnings reports, no X dates, no nothing. 
What I'll do is I'll write that 30 delta covered call deep out of the money, pick up a little crumb that equals their dividend. I feel like I'm doubling my dividends. And I do this all the time. Used to do it with Chevron damn near every other month. But this year I'm doing it on Intel, Bristol Myers, and now Dominion. Well, I've sold my Dominion share, so we'll be looking for another. I'll probably be using Southern. Now look, I told you we had that trade. Let's go ahead and get back to that trade. I know a lot of you might want to actually download this tracker. Go to my website, cpt-dashboard.com. Go to the free spreadsheets. Download your very own copy. They're all free and you too can keep the numbers in front of you. So now let's go ahead and talk about this. Now, as you can see, Intel gets ripped and now it's just drifting further. Look, earnings came, it wasn't good. Now Wall Street's selling out of it. I want you to notice something though, as the stock is getting close to its X date, we get a little bit of a move higher. They pay a hell of a dividend. So Wall Street loves to buy it up for that dividend and then bail happens all the time. Then we get the NASDAQ sell off. And now Intel being a tech company and uh, quite frankly, they weren't that impressive for earnings. Wall Street sells them off. Now in the middle of all this, when it's trading at about 59 X, that's where I do that cash secure put. And I'm thinking there's no way in this time frame, Intel is not going to find itself back up here. That chip shortage is just causing havoc. I just have to believe Wall Street will buy back Intel because they know Intel is going to sell chips when they make them. So as it falls and as it peels, I find myself in a bad spot. Remember I did the 59 cash secure put. Well, the stock's trading at 56 X and now some 30 days into this trade, I have to ask myself, do I want to own Intel at 59? I know a lot of you will say, look, you got the $2. So technically your cost basis is not 59. It's 57. Well, for the past 30 days, I don't want to make nothing. Right, because if I'm assigned the shares at 59, they gave me $2, my cost basis is 57. Well, that isn't why I got into the trade. I got into the trade because I thought Intel would actually fall and then rally a little bit higher. It finishes above 59. I'm never assigned the shares. I keep the $2 premium, we move on. Well, that didn't happen. Now I have to make a decision. Do I wanna own Intel at 57, 56? Well, I didn't. So what do I do? What I do is this, as we're getting close to expiration, uh, remember that options have two elements, uh, real money or intrinsic to, and time value. So as this thing is now trading intrinsic value and just a tiny bit of time value, because there's only a tiny bit of time value left in this trade, I'm able to buy this option back for $2.19. I'm actually going to give up 19 cents as a loss. Remember I got $2? Well, I paid $2.19. The 19 cents is the true cost of this trade. So now the question is this, I'm gonna take the hit because I don't wanna be assigned Intel's shares. The, because this thing hasn't rallied where I thought, it's been 30 days, I'm not sure where this goes. So I wanna be rid of it, so that's why I bought it back, took the loss, now what's the plan? Well, I did some numbers and this is what we can do. If you go to Intel's options chain, in fact, I have it right here. If we bring up the July 2nd, that's about 30 days from now. If we bring up the July 2nd, 57 strike, basically where the stock's trading now, we can basically get $1.79. Do you see it right there? That would be the trade that I'd be interested in doing. I wanna collect a decent amount of premium. I wanna pay for that 19 cents that I just uh, gave back to the markets. So what kind of numbers would I get for this trade? Well, let's do the math on this. So it looks like I'll get $1.79. Now we have to scratch that because I'm giving up the 19 cents, right? The 19 cents that I had to pay to get out of the last trade, well, that's gonna leave me with a buck 60. So for the next 30 days, if I sold a cash secure put, a 57 at the money cash secure put, a near the money cash secure put, I mean, it's trading at, uh, it's trading at 57.12, but it's near the money. I would get $1.60 for the next 30 days. So let's do the math on that and see what kind of cash on cash percentage gain we would make. So if I did this trade, I would actually make 1.85 or 1.9% cash on cash for the next 30 days. Now, uh, because I've invested this money for two months, that's gonna be more like a percent a month. Now, I will tell you this, making a percent a month got, got Bernie Madoff in trouble. If you remember, that's what got him popped for that Ponzi scheme. Uh, when they checked the numbers, he was cooking the books to where it looked like he was making 1% a month uh, every single month. But hey, when we sell premium, we could actually do that ourselves. And in this case, for two months, I would make 1% per month or 
2% over a 60 day period. Now that's actually not bad when you extrapolate that out. I hate extrapolating it out because I probably won't do this trade for the next 10 months, but here's the deal. A lot of people say annualized, that would be 12% cash on cash for the year. And that beats the S&P 500. So what we can do is this, we can buy back our options, look for the next trade. Do not coil up in the fetal position, taking the loss, fetal position, you do nothing. Be like me, right? Recognize that you don't wanna be in a trade. Then recognize the next possible trade you can do. Do the numbers. If it's green, it's green. We do it, we move on. Because again, it's mindset. It's keeping a half cup full. Because I'll tell you what, this trade, I got kicked in the ribs, lost money, wasn't feeling good about it. This new trade, I'm not gonna get kicked in the ribs. At least that's what I hope. And I'm feeling good about it. John's gonna have another green tree. Hey, look, it's all about mindset, being inspired, being motivated. So what I want you to do is think of it that way, stay half cup full. Now I'm gonna leave it right here, one free month offer right now. Go to my website, cpt-dashboard.com, sign up for my upgraded CTP dashboard so you can be a part of the wheel report that I'm posting on the web. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put it in a phone app too. The wheel is one of those trades that right now, right now everybody can do because a lot of these stocks are down. And one of my rules for starting a new wheel trade is just that. We wanna enter these trades when the stocks are a little bit lower. So, hey, look, again, sign up. Would love to welcome you aboard. Look, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to wish you the very best. And, hey, look, I'm going to see Jerry today. Absolutely going to talk to Jerry about my new wheel report. Hey, look, be safe, be healthy. Most important, be lucky. Until next time, may all your covered calls be profitable.